بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمعون صدق الله العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا سيدي يا خطيب الله الفريز أون الغلوري بلانس تو الله تعالى and the peace blessings upon our noble master our leader our رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم brothers if you can come forward and fill the rows in the front there's more reward at the front especially it's refreshing to see youngsters come and sit at the front of the masjid don't be shy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Al-Quran Al-Kareem قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّنَّا يَجْمَعُونَ that say O beloved it is by the favor of Allah and say O beloved by the favor of Allah and His mercy upon this let the Muslims rejoice let the Muslims celebrate and then he states Azza wa Jalla that this rejoicing upon the favor of Allah and the mercy of Allah is better than everything which they amass Zara zor se kahiye subhanallah Subhanallah Piche wale saati bhi zara zor se kahiye subhanallah Subhanallah اللہ کے گھر میں آئے ہیں اللہ کی تصویر کو اللہ کی حمد کو بیان کرنا مسجد کے کاموں میں سے سب سے بڑا کام ہے اللہ تعالیٰ کا گھر اسی لئے بنایا گیا سبحان اللہ اکی دو جہاں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ایک مشہور حدیث میں فرمایا کہ ایک ایسا وقت بھی آئے گا میری امت پر جب ایسے لوگ مسجدوں میں آئیں گے جو دنیا کی باتیں کریں گے اور ان کا نا اللہ تعالیٰ سے کوئی تعلق ہوگا تو اس پہ سرکار دوالم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے وعید فرمائی لہذا علماء کرام بھی لکھتے ہیں کہ جب کوئی شخص مسجد میں دنیا کی باتیں کرتا ہے تو وہ دنیا کی باتیں اس کے عامال کو ایسے یعنی ایسے اس کو کھاتا ہے دنیا کی باتیں اس کو ایسے کھاتی ہیں جس طرح آگ یعنی لکڑی کو جلاتی ہے تو اپنے عامال کو ضائع کرنے کا ایک بہترین طریقہ یہی ہے کہ دنیا کی باتیں مسجد میں کریں نعوذ باللہ تو اس سے بہت بڑا یعنی پرہیز کرنا ہم سب کا فرض بنتا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ سب کو عمل کی توفیق عطا فرمائے The masajid were made to remember Allah and his Habib صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and to worship Allah We have 24 hours in a day and times that by seven to get a full week and many of us even attend Jum'ah for only half an hour in one week. Aadha ghenda. Saat dino mein se aadha ghenda sirf baaz loog masjid mein aate hain. Arre kam az kam yeh jo aadha ghenda hai isko Allah ta'ala ke liye sarf karein. At least this half an hour which you are spending in the house of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, this should be in full tawajjuh on what the speaker is saying because when the speaker is saying قال Allah wa قال Rasool Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam then the speaker is not speaking from himself but he is conveying what Allah Ta'ala and his Rasool sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have conveyed. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam mentions in a famous hadith, he says, بَلِّهُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةِ That narrate from me, spread the message from me, even if it be one verse. Even if it is one verse. اِمْ مُجْ سَيْ آغَيْ پَيْغَامْ کو پہنچانَا اگرچہ ایک آیت بھی ہو. تو سرکار کو عالم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی اس حدیث مبارک کہتا ہے پوری امت آتی ہے اور پوری امت پر فرض بنتا ہے کہ دین اسلام کی تبلیغ کرنا اس میں کوئی تخصیص نہیں 
اس میں سرکار نے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے کسی خاص طبقے کو یا کسی خاص جماعت کو اس کام کے لیے مقرر نہیں کیا بلکہ فرمایا عام طور پہ سیگا جمع کا ہے امر کا ہے بل انی ولو آیا تو بل کا جو سیگا ہے وہ فعل امر ہے اور اس میں جمع کا سیگا ہے اس میں کوئی تخصیص نہیں عام ہے جو بھی ہو عام مسلمان ہو عالم ہو امام ہو مقتدی ہو تو بزرگ ہو یا چھوٹا ہو سب کے لیے مرد ہو یا عورت ہو سرکار نے حکم فرمایا ولو آیا اسی طرح اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے قرآن کریم میں ارشاد فرمایا کن تم خیر امت اخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنہون عن المنکر وتؤمنون باللہ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی mentions in surah ali imran he says you o umma of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kuntum you the people who are the followers of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are the best of mankind you are the best of people taken from mankind and why he mentions he says ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah that because you command the good because you forbid the evil and because you believe in Allah تو سر اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی نے قرآن میں واضح فرمایا کہ تمام امتوں میں سے بہترین امت کون سی ہے نبی دو عالم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اور اس کی وجہ بھی بیان فرمائی اس کی وجہ کیا ہے اس کی وجہ کسی کے نام نصب کام قصب اور یعنی کسی کی ذات کے بارے میں نہیں نہیں فرمایا کہ تم نیکی کا حکم دیتے ہو تم برائی سے منع کرتے ہو اور تم اللہ پر ایمان لاتے ہو and again when Allah mentions this some of the مفسرین say specifically with تفسیس this verse applies to صحابہ اکرام علیہ مغلطوان that they are the best of all people and that is true that the صحابہ of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم occupy the highest rank of the ummah of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم of the انبیاء بعد از انبیاء علیہ السلام سب سے افضل اور آلہ جماعت کونسی ہے صحابہ کی so this is an established fact but بالعموم with generality this verse also applies to every muslim every believer who is from the ummah of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم that we have been given شرف و عزاز by کتاب اللہ that we are the best of people اتنا برا شرف کہ ہم تمام امتوں میں سے سب سے بہترین امت اللہ تعالیٰ نے ہمیں یہ عزاز بخشا تو اس پہ ناز کرنا ہے اس پہ فخر کرنا ہے اس پہ اللہ تعالیٰ کا شکر ادا کرنا ہے and what is the best way to thank Allah the best way to thank Allah سبحانہ وتعالی is to worship Allah ما خلقت الجن والانس اللہ لیعبدون that Allah سبحانہ وتعالی mentions and I did not create جن on mankind except that they worship except that they do the ibadah and this is what gives the jinn and mankind who worship and who believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it gives them a higher run so coming back to the verse which was mentioned at the beginning because it is Rabi al-Awwal today being the 10th of Rabi al-Nur Sharif and the 12th being very close Tomorrow night will be Barmi Kirat. Subhanallah. The night on which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rahmatan lil alameen Sayyid al-Mursaleen Khatim al-Nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam grace this universe with his presence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Give us tawfiq to remember him praise him and follow him as we should Allah mentions in the Quran in the verse which was quoted at the beginning قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Allah states that say that by the favor of Allah and his mercy upon this Muslims should rejoice Muslims should rejoice on the bounty the favor of Allah the Fadl and his Rahmah and Allah says هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Rejoicing upon the fadal and rahmah of Allah is better than everything which they amass. تو اللہ تعالیٰ کے فضل پر 
اور اللہ تعالیٰ کی رحمت پر خوشی کا اظہار کرنا جشن منانا اور خوشی کو محسوس کرنا یہ مسلمانوں کے لیے ان کے تمام مال سے ہی بہتر ہے تفسیر آف قرآن دا ہائیسٹ درجہ آف تفسیر اور قرآن از بل قرآن کہ ایکسپلیننگ دا قرآن بائی دا قرآن اٹ سر سو اللہ از سینگ دیٹ مسلم اور ٹو ریجوائس اینڈ بی ہیپی اینڈ سیلیبریٹ اپن دا مرسی آف اللہ اینڈ ہز فادر ہز فیور وٹ از دا گریٹسٹ مرسی آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی وین وی لک ان دا بک آف اللہ اللہ میکس اٹ کلیئر ہم سیلف ہی سیز وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين سبحان الله وی ہیو ناٹ سینٹ یو او بلوویڈ ایکسپٹ ایز ا مرسی ٹو دا یونیورس اور ہم نے اپ کو صرف پورے جہان کے لیے رحمت بنا کے بھیجا ہے پیارے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم تو اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے رحمت کو واضح قرار دیا کہ رحمت کون سی رحمت ہے جو سب سے بڑی رحمت ہے سرکار عالم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی ذات مبارکہ So Allah alayhi salatu was salam is the greatest mercy of Allah. And then Allah is mentioning his fadl, his favor. Allah states in another maqam in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, لَقَدْ لَامْ is for ta'kid, for emphasis. قَدْ بِي بَرَائِ تَحْكِيق The qad is also to emphasize like indeed, indeed, definitely, beshak, zarur, albatta zarur, Allah Ta'ala is par taqeed farma raha hai. La qad, manna Allahu ala al-mu'minina idh ba'atha fihim rasoola. Allah Ta'ala ka farman hai ke beshak, Allah Ta'ala ka bhoat bara fazal hai muslimano par. Kiyo? جب رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو مبوس فرمایا سبحان اللہ انڈیڈ اٹ از ا گریٹ فیور اف اللہ اپن مسلمز وین وین اللہ سبحان و تعالی سینٹ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سو وین واز ہز بعثت وین واز ہز سینڈنگ ہز سینڈنگ واز ان اے فارم اف میلاد النبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہز برتھ بائی ہز برتھ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہی واز سینٹ ٹو مان کائنڈ And this has been made clear in Al-Quran Al-Kareem in many places. So the favor of Allah is great. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear in Al-Quran Al-Kareem that this great favor upon Muslims was when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to the believers. Allah mentions in the maqam, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that indeed has come to you a nur, a light, A light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Kitab al-Mubin, a clear book. And the Mufassirin mentioned that Nur, the Murad of Nur here is Ya'ni Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Murad of Nur here is Aqaid al-Jahan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why Medina became Medina al-Munawwara. Medina the enlightened one when Sayyidah Amina radiallahu anha when she gives birth to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she mentions and she says that a light exited from me and by this Nur I could see the palaces of Syria. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And when the Mahallat of Syria became enlightened it was due to the Nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Medina became enlightened. And it is mentioned in the riwayat, in many riwayat how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brightened the city of Medina to al from darkness. He brought it to light. And Yathrib became Taiba. So Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. He is the greatest mercy. He is the greatest favor. No matter how much a Muslim tries to thank Allah, praise Allah, worship Allah for this great favor and tries to thank him as the wajalla, it will fall short of fulfilling the haq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon us. Haq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first duty for a Muslim is to recognize the rights of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon us. Amongst his rights are that we love him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam mentions, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه 
من والده وولده والناس اجمعين تم میں سے کوئی شخص اس وقت تک کامل مومن نہیں بن سکتا جس وقت تک وہ مجھ سے اپنے والدین سے بھی اپنے بچوں سے بھی بلکہ تمام لوگوں سے بھی زیادہ محبت نہ کرے Messenger of Allah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم mentions that none of you will truly believe until he loves me more than he loves his parents, his father, his child, his son, his children. <laughs> that all mankind, until a Muslim does not love me more than this, he is not a true believer. So hope of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we want to see true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then look no further than sahaba kiram alayhi wa ridwan. Sahabai Kiram who gave their lives for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who gave their wealth for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who gave their children up for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who gave up their homes for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who gave up everything for the sake of Allah jalla jalaluhu and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that Islam within a hundred years or one hundred and fifty years spread from France to China from India to Spain, from Russia right to the bottom tip of the Nile in Africa, throughout the world, as far as the known world was at that time, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best generations, they spread the Paygham of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was inspired by none other than true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there was no love, there was no just by ishq, there was not that fire of love, then the Sahaba would never have been able to smash the Byzantine Roman Empire, to smash the Persian Empire, which were world superpowers at that time. So see what the fire of love can do. Jo ishq ki aag hai na, wo itna bara inkalaab le sakti hai ke pure alam ko tabdeel kar sakti hai. To itna jo ishq ka yani jo inkalaab tha, and this is due to their love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But alongside love for Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam, there has to be obedience to him. There has to be following his sunnah. There has to be adhering to his sharia. That we cannot just be people of empty slogans. Ghulam hai, ghulam hai. Rasul ke ghulam hai. Ghulam ye rasul mein maut bhi kabool hai. To ye nara bazi hoti hai. ہوتی رہتی ہے اچھا ہے ہم نعرے لگاتے ہیں سرکار کی محبت کرتے ہیں لیکن نعرے کے ساتھ کام بھی ایسا کرنا چاہیے کام کی یعنی کوشش بھی کرنی چاہیے ان کی سنتوں کو اپنائیں ان کے راہ راست ان کے یعنی طریقے پر خود آئیں اور دوسروں کو بھی بلائیں this is also a great fault on the umma of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in al-Quran al-Kareem he says قُلْ اِن قُنْتُمْ تُحِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ مَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah Ta'ala mentions, He says, Say, O beloved, if you claim to love Allah, tell the people, if you love Allah, then follow me. If you love Allah, then follow me. And then Allah will love you. And Allah will forgive for you your own deeds. Allah is forgiving and merciful. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is commanded by Allah in this verse. And this verse makes it very clear that if you claim to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but you are not praying salah, you claim to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but we are not following his sunnah. We claim to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but we are involved in haram. We are busy with those things which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hated. Then how is our claim of love true just by doing one milad jaloos every year? The purpose of the Mawlid is to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To gain from his love and in this regard inshallah azza wa jal we will have the annual Mawlid. The annual Mawlid Jalus of Bradford this year inshallah azza wa jal and there will be so there will be a collection for the annual Mawlid which will be from the Central Masjid Westgate Bradford this year and I request everyone to wholeheartedly give for the sake of Allah for this Milad. But giving for the Milad is not a loss. 
giving for the milad of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is gain. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention? He says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَعُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say, O beloved, that by the favor of Allah and His mercy, Muslims let Muslims rejoice upon this. And rejoicing, celebrating upon this fadl and rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than everything which they possess. So, Aqal Islatu Islam, ki jashan par kharj karna, maal ko kharj karna, is pe wakit sarf karna, is pe koshish kavish karna, ye muslimano ki tamam jano maal se izu dua baru se bhi behitar hai. Subhanallah. Ki Quran ka faisla. So, when we gather for the maulid, and when we hold gatherings of Mawlid, there are certain aspects which we also need to pay heed to. That we have certain Naq Khans and Nasheed artists who come for one month from other countries, from the other side of the world, from Pakistan or India, and within one month are able to accumulate thousands and thousands of pounds. What the Qawm needs to think is for just merely reciting poetry. Now there's no etiraz I have against Nati Rasul Makbur sallallahu alayhi wa But our priorities need to be in the right place. Where are our priorities? Currently we have gatherings throughout the blessed month of Rabi and Nur Sharif. Where brothers stay awake, sisters stay awake for the whole night. And not khani occurs. But when we see our masajid for the time of salah, the rows are very small. This is a reality. And this is something which we need to reflect upon. And in the same way, not Khani is given so much money and so much investment, but our ulama, our teachers, our mudarrisin, they are struggling to pay their bills for their masajid. They are struggling to make ends meet. And these are the people who sit from morning to evening teaching Al-Quran, teaching Al-Hadith, teaching Fiqh, teaching Ataid, teaching the Sirah. But when we see gatherings of knowledge and gatherings of fard ulul, we see very few and very little amount of people. Why is this? We have become people of entertainment, but we are not people of education. If somebody wants to mention a point of Islam to rectify all of us, myself and all of us, then people frown upon it. Oh, why is Maurice attacking so and so? Why is he speaking like this? When? It is general point being made to self-rectify and to better ourselves. Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentions, he prays for the one who mentions his faults to his face. Sayyidina Farooq al-Azum radiallahu anhu, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he loved that person who would come to him and tell him his faults. Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was free of faults, he was Amir al-Mu'mineen and he was of the best of people. And he, Allah, he said, I appreciate that person the most who does my islah. But instead of islah, we have become people who give farmaish to the speaker. We give our farmaish, our request, that recite this kalam, do this speech, talk about this, talk about that. But the important things which we need to focus on, we have neglected. We have most primarily neglected our youth. Majority of the gatherings in the masajid are in Urdu. With all due respect to our elder generation. But Urdu in this country now is a dying language. The future generations, our children and children's children don't understand a word of even Birbiri, our mother tongue. Never mind Urdu. Urdu to dur ki baat hai. Hamare bache to Birbiri bhi nahi samajte. Apni jo madri zuban hai. So what is necessary for Muslims in this day and age? to fund and support English-speaking ulama, English-speaking students of knowledge and imams, and to invest in madrasa, to invest in the education system, to invest in teaching youngsters. Otherwise, these youngsters, this is why they go astray. This is why they go to other jamaats who don't believe in Milad of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa who don't believe in Qiyar al-Sharif, who don't believe in Awliya Allah, who don't follow the way of Hosul Azam, who don't believe in Allah, Hazrat, Mujaddid al fasani and so on. Because of our own shortcomings, because we have not catered for that in our gatherings, then this is why many of our youth turn away and go on the misguided paths of other sects. This is why Ahlul Sunnah needs to wake up. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam has mentioned how 
parents have a primary duty of educating their children. Parents, the madrasa, the first madrasa is the mother and the father. And let us begin with Al Quran Al Karim. Allah says, O anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. O anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O people who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire. This is a primary duty upon the father, the husband, the man of the house. He has to become the man. And if he sees wrong, he has to correct it. He has to rectify his wife. He has to rectify his children. He has to build an Islamic environment in his home. We cannot expect that Qari Sahib in the Masjid, uh, Ustadji is going to solve our issues and teach. The Ustadji Qari Sahib only has an hour or an hour and a half. If that, and that time is divided amongst all his students. He is majboor. He is limited. But you have 24 hours, 7 days a week. Okay, except school and, and masjid, madrasa, the rest of the time it is the parents' duty, the mother and the father. This responsibility falls on your shoulders. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, كُلُّ مَوْلُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَسِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states that every child is born upon fitrah, upon nature, upon Islam. And then he says, it's the parents of that child who make that child into a Jew, who make that child into a Christian, who make that child into a fire worshipper. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam placed this responsibility, Abba his parents, upon the parents of that child. So Muslims need to wake up to this. So Qalidu Alam sallallahu alayhi wasalam ka farman is nishan, ke har bachcha islam par fitrat par paida hota hai. Aur phir farmaya, ke uske walidain hain, جو اس کو یہودی بناتے ہیں اس کو عیسائی بناتے ہیں اس کو مجوسی بناتے ہیں اور ایک اور روایت میں آتا ہے اس کو مشرق بناتے ہیں تو ارے پتا چلا کہ جو والدین ہیں ان کا حق ان کا کام ان کی ذمہ داری سب سے زیادہ والا ہے that is the highest responsibility and this responsibility if we do not pick up the pieces today and take this deen forward to our next generation then we will only see fitna and fasad and destruction for the future generations recently like we saw in the night uh, you know bonfire night on halloween there was trouble youths are going crazy they're going mad on the streets why why are the youngsters going wild on the streets throwing fireworks at cars you know throwing fireworks at the police at the fire services these are our facilities right wallahi we need to wake up as muslims as a community we need to wake up and i primarily say that the responsibility lies on parents. Parents need to take the lead and they need to become firm and need to establish that Islamic <coughs> mindset within their children from their homes from the outset. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq. Every Thursday in this masjid we have a seerah gathering in which we have small dhikr. After the dhikr we cover a chapter from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in English free of charge okay there's no you know 100 pound 200 pound charge of fees nothing free free sabilillah and we have a very small turn up unfortunately we have very few brothers and sisters as well alhamdulillah who attend and learn but what are we learning about what are we covering we are covering the full life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Mubarakah now if I were to ask people in here, tell me about the childhood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Tell me the names of his children. Tell me the names of his wives. Tell me the state of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam up to the age of 40. What happened after the hijrah, after he was given prophethood and then the hijrah when he migrated to Medina. What were the major battles of Islam? What happened? Who accepted Islam first? Who came later? What was the Treaty of Hudaybiyah about? How did fath e Makkah occur? All of these questions, how will we be able to answer them if we are neglectful ourselves? Not funny, I say once again, is good in its own place. Praise Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I recite Nath Sharif myself. But at the same time, know your priorities. The fall of the comes first. Praying your salah and correcting your salah. Uh, correcting your recitation of Quran with the Jweed. 
recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. How many of us can recite Surah Al-Fatiha correctly and Surah Ikhlas so that our namaz is even valid? Then, not khani ke liye, you know, we can stay awake all night, but these things, no tawajju at all. This is something which we need to prioritize and something which we need to take away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me tawfiq foremost to do amal upon what has been said. So give our short comments and give us tawfiq to attend the Duluth on Sunday, inshallah, as a budget. Sunday, 12 p.m., Westgate, Tablighul Islam Masjid in Bradford, the central masjid. Everyone, please attend. And the Jalus will begin at 3 o'clock. And the Jalus will uh, start from Westgate Masjid and finish at Victor Street Masjid in Bradford 9. And the uh, gathering will continue there. There will be ulama and uh, speakers, inshallah, azawajal. All of us from this masjid will also be attending. And those of you who want to donate further for this maulid, please do give your donations wholeheartedly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our attendance.